Okay, people, I am now here trying to record to you, and I'm going to be recording a video about me as candidate for president. I know I'm not attached to a political party. I know I'm not a governor of a state. I'm not a congressman or a senator. I know that. I also know one other thing. That I am just an average educated American who believes in honesty, believes in truth, and believes that our government shall serve the people, not the people serve the government. I do not believe in any political parties whatsoever. Gosh. That makes me an independent. If I win, I'll be with other groups. I don't mind being in that category. There's, there's only one other president, George Washington, that was an independent. So, what is this video really about? It's about our Constitution. Some people say it's obsolete. I say it's not. It's actually a living document. What does that really mean? It means, without you, the people, it's nothing. You are the document. You are what makes it real. You, the people, not the federal government. The Constitution uses you, the people, to direct how the federal government shall function. The problem is, you're not participating. You are the failure. Each and every one of us. But we together, you and I, can fix these problems. That's why I'm running for president. I'm not running for president because I'm some guy sitting in the field thinking, hey, that's a good thing to do, just run for president. No, I'm running for president because I believe in our Constitution. I believe in you, the people. I believe in our nation. I have world experience. That I do have. Believe me, the Navy gives you plenty of world affairs. In 20 some years, I've been through many countries, seen many people. I've had friends in a lot of them. I see what they're made of, not their government. I'm a person who is given this question. Why does the American government always interfere with other governments? And I say they should. My foreign policy is that each and every nation has a right to exist. And only the people within that nation has the right to decide how they shall be governed. And no others. Problems with illegal aliens. I have a very sound solution to that problem. The rich are not going to like it. They're not going to like it in the slightest. Because they're the ones who are taking advantage of the American people. See, the biggest problem with hiring illegal aliens is that, well, let's see, according to our government, Social Security doesn't have enough funds. Well, how many illegal aliens pay, pay Social Security? None. Well, how about Medicare and Medicaid? None. How about unemployment? None. These are benefits that you, the American citizen, earn through your payroll. Am I not correct? But yet, these people who hire illegal aliens pay none of that out of their pay because their pay would be so small that they wouldn't come. So then they'd have to increase that. Then where is the money going? Oh, it's going in their pockets, not where it should be. So Social Security doesn't have enough money and the rich has been stealing from it. Every time they hire an illegal alien, they steal out of Social Security. Medicaid doesn't have enough money to cover, so we have to come up with Obamacare to force people off of Medicaid? Oh, well, every time we hire an illegal alien, those rich people hire illegal aliens, they put that money in their pocket instead of giving it to Medicaid. Unemployment runs out. There's not enough for the unemployment. The federal government better doggone start getting more because all these illegal rich people hiring Illegal aliens are the very same people that are not putting money into unemployment. See what I'm saying? And what about 
you as a citizen. Our government is trying to take your constitution away, step by step, inch by inch. And you're allowing it. And don't say you're not. I can prove it. Any one of you who dare to say that what I say is not true, confront me. And I will show you by law where the Constitution is totally ignored. I will give you one example here. Easy. Here's book. Here's the Constitution. You guys don't have to confront me. I can confront you. Amendment 1. Congress shall make no laws. Respecting an establishment of a religion or prohibiting the free exercise, therefore. Let's just use that one. The first part of the First Amendment, I just opened up. And that's just the way the book opened up. I mean, there's no markers there, nothing. No, but the Supreme Court did. The free exercise, therefore, has been limited by the Supreme Court of the United States. Which ignores the First Amendment. They said no prayer in school. Well, you just limited free exercise out. Once you put any restriction whatsoever, no matter how minute, it is a limiting. Now, not only did the Supreme Court ignore the First Amendment, I will go to the Tenth Amendment. The power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution. Which, for example, limiting the free exercise of a religion, nor prohibited but to it, to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. Constitution says it's the people's choice to decide where prayer shall be, not the federal government. And when I told you I will show you law, I mean other things. Now, yes, I don't have all this governmental lying, political correctness, or whatever you want to call it. What I do have is the truth. What I am going to bring to you is that, one, the Constitution shall be adhered to as it is written, whether we like it or not. Okay? Two, the voice of the people shall be heard. By our government. And our federal government shall learn that they are there to serve the people. And the people are not to serve the federal government. And our federal government will start to learn that their responsibility holds to the American people. And no others. These are just a few of the things I am saying. I have my platform. It's posted on the Constitution S party. It's not a political party. Anybody could join any affiliation or anything. All you have to do is believe in the Constitution of the United States and wish for it to be enforced as it is written. Okay, people, this is JD. This is the man who's going to bring your voice to Washington, D.C., this is the man that's going to cause Congress to have to serve you, the people. This is the man that's going to take and make our federal government the Constitution of the United States of America. Or die trying. I make those promises, those three promises. One, to bring the voice to Washington, D.C. Two, to ensure that our federal government serves the people and the people are not the servant of the federal government. Three, leadership. Because with leadership, the Constitution has strength. Or bring the strength of the Constitution into Washington, D.C. Those are my three promises. Your voice, government serving you, and the leadership our government needs. It's up to you to decide whether you are going to do your job that the Constitution needs. 
Not sit at home and say I don't get involved. Not sit at home and say politics not for me. Not sit at home and say I don't vote because it don't count. You must start realizing you are the reasons that our Constitution is not working and the federal government through Congress is trying to steal that Constitution and all its rights, privileges, and promises made to you as an American citizen. Yes, that's what's at stake. Thank you. Have a nice day. JD for 2016. I'm not going to bring any miracles. I'm not going to bring any lies. I'm not bringing all this other stuff. All I'm going to tell you is this. You are the one that matters. Your voice is the voice that only needs to be heard. And our government, federal government, needs to learn to serve you, the people. That's it. That's all I'm about. I'm not going to talk to you about world peace. I'm not going to talk to you about anything else. I'm not going to talk to you about wars. But, oh, understand this. War is hell. In peacetime, it's murder. Don't expect me to be there and play tit for tat. I don't play games. I'm only out to win. And I love to cheat. Remember that. If you want to think about really why we have to spend so much in wars. So many men have to go constantly off to different nations. Look at the way our government is dealing with the problems of today. Are they doing it like they did in the 40s, like 41, 42, 43, 1900, 41, 42, or are they dealing it politically correct? You start thinking about what needs to be done because you're the reason it's not being done. Thank you. This is JD.